good. All right. So I believe that most of you may have received the, the documents plus the GitHub repository. In fact, the emails that I sent earlier on. Um, we'll be going back to them from time to time to just check out what we can garner from them. But then at least um, I think for, I sent the curricula for this very workshop and um, we'll be going through it one after the other. So to begin, um, first of, um, for the next 15 to 20 minutes, um, I will offer some basics, uh, more or less, it will be a bit of theory for us to just get started, have a better mental model of what we are to expect and how to understand how the web actually operates. And um, we would also be giving some resources that we can actually take home to do more revision and also explore more about the web. Now, um, when I put out the form, um, the main purpose of the form was to help us or help me to understand the, the, the demographics and the, the, the people who are actually interested in the workshop. And from the statistics that I got, I realized that about 60 plus of us, percent of us um, have not even programmed before, which is really good meaning that now we are going to start from scratch. I don't make any assumptions that you've done any programming before. The only assumption that I make is that you have dealt with a laptop before, you've browsed on online before. These are the key assumptions that you should have. If you have programming experience, that is really good. If you have um, done some basic ICT too, that is good. But then there is no assumption that you should have programmed or even opened a text editor before you can actually join this um, online um, class. So over time, um, I think we'll be breaking maybe after 45 minutes, we'll have some 15 minutes break so that we can also take a breather and relax a little bit. Sometimes during the break, we can use the break to talk, have chats, and then we we'll resume back and then we we'll would continue. And my hope is that by four, five o'clock, we are done with everything, hopefully, hopefully. Okay, all right. Now, so um, the, 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 the focus now will be on the fundamentals of the web. And we've all utilized the web. We use it day in, day out. And sometimes we, even confuse the web and the internet together. And we'll be seeing the different um, 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 the differences that exist between what the web is and what the internet actually is. And why the web actually requires what it requires, like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and all that. Okay, so I welcome you all to today's training session. Um, my name is... Um, Ralph or Rafa Mponsa, and I'm a lecturer at GIMPA, where I teach information systems um, courses. So this will be a very brief outline, and then we'll just jump into the practical side. So don't be too bored if the theory is getting a bit winding, but the key thing is that you really need these um, solid fundamentals to be able to understand even how to actually program. Um, those that have taught before know that for me, it's all about understanding the fundamentals. Without the fundamentals, you can't really do anything. And understanding actually drives mastery. Okay, so we'll be looking at the internet fundamentals and the web. Then we'll look at the hypertext markup language, the most popular language on the planet, which is the HTML. Then we'll look at cascading style sheets and JavaScript. Okay, so... Um, Let's zoom in. Now, before we begin, it's important we, as I have mentioned before, we need to have a mental model. How are we going to really understand what is going to be taught? Now, the whole point of this exercise is for us to know how to program. Eventually, at the end of the day, before we finish this um, workshop, whether you've programmed before or not, you should have touched the, your text editor. You should have actually written some codes seen it on the screen 
and I mean, being excited about it. Yes, but to understand how to program, it, programming can be confusing. Those that have programmed before would know this. And sometimes you can even say, I'm going to YouTube to go and learn and all that. And some you come back and you are still confused. And the whole point is that it has got to do with our learning models, how we really think about what we are learning. So programming becomes a bit simple if you know what you are thinking of doing, because the computer as we know it um, is dumb. It's, it doesn't know anything. You need to instruct it before it can do anything. And the computer is really broad. So many parts of it from the hardware section to the software section, it's cut across. I mean, yesterday I was teaching some um, my, my, my level 100 students and we were exploring so many aspects of the computer from electronic section way up to the software layer. And you realize that it's a software layer that actually changes rapidly. The hardware layer, we already know of hard disks. Hard disks have been in session ever since the dawn of computers. But even though today we have SSD, they are still operating with the same principles. But the software domain constantly changes. The programming languages that come constantly, they are changing. We are getting new programming languages being deployed out each and every day. And if you visit some of the, um, the, the code repositories like GitHub, you see that each day there is a new software that is being deployed. And so um, the question that you may ask yourself, how do you also join in this, in this workforce? How are you, would you be able to also think creatively and come up or give birth to that creative idea that you actually have? And that boils down to having a very solid mental model in understanding what programming is about. So one key thing that we'll revisit in understanding this whole um, fair session is that we will have to be thinking imperatively. So you think like the way the computer would do stuff and then you code like another human being is going to read your code. Okay, now, so when you take the web, for instance, okay, the web actually is, it sits on the internet. The internet is what we refer to as like the infrastructure, the cables, the, the network, the satellite, all right? These make up the internet, all right? If we currently, as we are talking, um, some of you are using broadband, some of you are using um, MTN um, 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 network. These network physical infrastructure or ICT infrastructures lead us to, that, that is what the internet actually is about. The internet and it's about the connection of what? Of computers, okay? It's about the connection of computers. Um, you can connect your smartphone to another smartphone and you've actually formed a micro internet. So, and these connections, I mean, they, as I've already said, could be fiber optics, um, 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 cables, satellites, Bluetooth channels, Wi-Fi. All these are what we refer to as part of what, or what makes up what? The internet, all right? That's what makes up the internet. And in these connective channels, um, data is transmitted through them in the form of packets. Okay, now um, we won't dive too deep in the, um, in the electronic aspect of how, these, how the data is being transmitted. But one key thing you need to understand is that the computer itself is an electronic device. And in our environment, um, there are waves, there are radio waves. And it is, we are capitalizing on these radio waves to send information across. So from one device to the other. Think about this. When you sit at home and you use your phone or your, your remote to, um, your air conditioning remote to turn on the air condition. Yeah, there is a channel through which that um, um, remote is communicating with the, 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 the AC. But in this case, the AC is not a computing device. And 
So we would not be talking about the AC and the remote as an internet, but that serves as a model in which we can understand how things are, are, are going on with regards to the internet, all right? Okay, please, um, as, I, as I go on, if you have any question, you can put it in the chat and um, I'm sure any of the moderators would, would attend to it, all right? I'll break at a point and then I'll allow for questions to come in. So the internet is, that physical ICT infrastructure that allows us to share information. And it is built on a very open model, okay? Anyone can join in the internet and can also, I mean, disconnect. But keep in mind, sometimes we get confused. Um, the internet and Google are not the same. Google is a company that utilizes the internet to serve its customers. Google is not the internet. It's very important because I remember some time ago I was teaching a class and people were thinking that because we've been using the term Google for so long, Google itself is the internet. We can say Google is an internet service company, it uses that search engine company. However, Google itself is not the internet. The internet was developed irrespective of any company that would have ever exist. And it came as a result of um, a research group, that's the ARPANET group. So um, during the early war times, um, research was going on. People had actually um, envisioned and done research on how we could come up with what a world wireless um, system. And from Graham Bell, when he built, when he brought in the telephone, we jump into another environment whereby now we want to work without the wires. And so the internet has been in existence way, way, way before even Google or YouTube or any of the companies that you can think of today existed, okay? And keep in mind that the internet is an open model. That is why you, you, can, you can turn off your data. If you turn off your data, it doesn't mean that the internet is off. The internet is still going on because it's a connection of what computers. and Basically, if you think about it, computers everywhere. It could be a computer in maybe in Amazon, in San Francisco, and they are all turned on and they are connected. And we are just sharing information across it. That is what the internet is. And we as individuals, as organizations, we access resources on the internet through what? Through the web browser. Okay, so then that takes us to what the web is. So the web is not the internet, rather the web is the multimedia interface of the internet. All right, the web is the multimedia interface of the internet. So we use the browser to serve. So you see, it is on the web that we see videos, we see um, pictures, we, see, we, we, we listen to audio, we do so many stuff. That is where you and I are even interfacing at the moment. Currently, we are interfacing using what? Zoom. And all these stuff reside on the web. Now, the information, the data that we actually share on the web are known as resources. So on the web, we have what? Resources. And so if I am saying that I'm going to watch a video about maybe, let's say, Word on Fire, um, um, Davido's video or Bernard Boy's video. These videos are what? They are resources. And we, we, on the internet, every resource has a unique address. On the web, every resource has what? A unique address. So just like um, you being at, um, you being at home and your family having a postal, uh, a post office box, number. You see, if I'm to send you a letter and your PO box is, let's say, PO box 661, Takrade or Axim, that PO box, that letter will come directly to you. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to um, into a different box. It will be going directly to you. Now, the same thing applies to the resources we find on the internet. For example, um, PDF, um, word file, uh, um, word document, all those documents, all those files that we see are resources. And each of them have what? Unique addresses. And we technically term them as what? URLs, Uniform Resource Locator. 
Okay. So one thing that you would understand now is that the web is not the internet, it's rather the multimedia interface of the internet. And we use tools, the tool that one of the key, the, 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 the most um, popular tool that we use on in surfing the internet on the web is what the web browser. And with regards to the web browsers, we have Chrome, we have uh, Mozilla Firefox, we have Edge, we have so many of them. Okay, so when we talk about web programming, our focus is on the web browsers. Our focus is on deploying applications that are going to be to 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 be to be served to our clients, who are individuals who are browsing on the web. Now, if you want to focus a lot on the internet infrastructure itself, then you are moving into what networking. That is a different domain. And that's, that is way beyond the course that we are doing today, the crash course we are doing today. Today, our focus will be on the web and how can we also get onto the web to do something, to create our website, to create our web apps, to, to, to share some information. That is what the web is about. Okay, and the web was pioneered by um, one man known as, um, he's, he's been knighted now, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. He is more or less like the father of the web. And the web has evolved over a long period of time. Um, at first, it was just pure text, but now we can see we have so many things we can do, which you'll be seeing very soon. You see that there are a whole lot of things that you can do on the web, whether you are a programmer or not. Good. All right. Okay, so the web browser is a powerful software. In fact, I, I personally would say, um, among all the software that has been developed on the planet, the web browser beats everything. It's, it's the most powerful software you can think of. And this is a key aspect of what you need to understand today. Because sometimes, most of the time, when we, we want to learn programming, especially web programming, we just jump in and we just start writing our HTML, CSS without really understanding what the web is really about. And so we, we, we may build a web page, and in future, you realize that you are lost. You do not even know what you are about. But it's important to understand that the web, it is, the web is that environment within which the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript can actually act. Without the web, you cannot get these technologies to work anywhere. Actually, HTML was built for the web, CSS for the web. So in modern day technologies, now we see that these technologies are also being ported into other domains, which will be in like, um, let's say mobile programming among others. Okay, so the web browser, is a program that communicates with your operating systems underlying firmware. So you go online, you install, let's say, um, Chrome. Now, in your mind, you are just going to key in www.google.com. And I'll demonstrate something to you guys very soon. You see, I think maybe let me just demonstrate it whilst I just talk about it because it's more of a practical class. All right. Um, let me share with you this screen. All right, um, good. I hope you can see. Uh, so um, let's look at what is gonna happen behind the scenes. So I'm gonna type in www, so let's say um, Ghana web, just like this. And please watch down here, what is gonna happen down here. Um, I'm hoping that it will be able to show. All right, so Ghana web, let me see. Good. You can see that there are some files that have just been downloaded. I'll refresh it again so that those that did not see would be able to see. I just entered in. So let me, yeah, let me just refresh the whole thing. So watch just down here. You see, now I just entered Ghana web and look at what is happening. There are files that are being downloaded. Now, what just happened was this, that this web browser, when I entered Ghana web on Google, what happens is that the browser as a, as a software communicates with the network facility of my laptop, move out, send that data, which is what Ghana web out 
of my laptop to hit the Ghana web server, which is located somewhere else, get the response, and then get it back to me. And as it, it's coming back, it comes back with all this data that you see here, these files. This is what actually the browser is about. This is what is happening behind the scenes. And you, you, you need not to really worry too much about the details, but you need to understand that there is a lot going on within the web. There's a lot going on within the web. Okay, so Alice, I can see your hand is up. Uh, um, hello, Alice. Okay. All right, so then let me shift back to, um, okay, I can see <laughs> quite a number of hands have been raised. So um, Alice or Elvis, please, you can, Okay. Hello, Elvis. Um, sir. Hello. Yeah. yeah, hello, Sam. Yeah. I think we, we are having issue with you your typings. We are not seeing it on our phone yet. We couldn't see whatever you typed. Oh, okay, so okay, 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 okay. Then let me let me redo it. Let me redo it. Um revive. I can see your hand is also up. It's the same issue, sir. It's the same issue, eh? All right, good. Then let me let me just redo it again and Let's see, um, let me see if I can turn my, yeah, good, all right, good. Um, so, please, can you see, is, 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 it, is it clear now? Um, no, we can only see the Keza on the search bar. Okay, can you see now? Yes. Good, all right. So um, Elvis, you can put on your 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 your. You can leave your your audio on so that if there is any problem, you can just draw my attention to it. So what I was saying was this: that you see, this is a browser, and normally we do not really think much about the browser, but the browser itself is a program. It's a software that has been developed, and it's not developed by with JavaScript or uh, with HTML. It is actually the, probably develop with C, another different programming language. Now, the browser, as we see it, as I said, is what? It's a software. Now, it's a software that communicates with your, your operating systems network facilities. So right now, as you can see on the screen, if I enter Ghana Web and I hit enter, please look below here. Just look down here. Just look down here and see what is going to happen. I just hit enter, and you will see files are being downloaded. Files have been downloaded. If I choose to go to maybe, let's say, another website, let's say um, CSS Tricks, if I enter this, you see new files are being downloaded. So the web operates on a model, or the, in fact, the internet itself it operates on a model of what? Request and response. And we make a, re a request each time we hit on Google, each time we are searching something in our browsers, we are making a request. And then the browser would communicate with what? It will communicate with the operating system's network facilities, send that packet of data out of our laptop straight into the waves to a particular server somewhere, get the feedback and respond back to us. And we'll get, we'll see what we are seeing. So what you are seeing currently on this page, CSS, Drake's, Almanac, this is the response that we got from a particular machine, from another computer. I believe that it, 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 it does make sense. All right, Elvis, your hand is, is up again. Okay, all right. Um, Senam, please, any, your hand is up. Okay. All right, so with that said, yeah. Yes. It, it seems we were not seeing the actions that you were performing. There, there was nothing happening on the screen unless um, we we just noticed the platform. But whatever okay, you so said was down. Currently, can you see can you see Google on your screen? Yes, I can see Google. I can see the the page. The name. Can you see the the dark uh -huh. side? Yes. Can now I can see things downloading. Yeah. I can see. A different thing now. Okay, yeah. so please, um, if you can't see, just raise your hand so that um, I would, I would, I would, I would do something about it. If if you can't see, 
Okay, but I believe that now everyone can see. So let me just quickly repeat what I just said for those who did not see. Now, we, as I was saying that the browser is a software, but as a software, it communicates with what? The, 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 the network layer of what? And other, other, other aspects, not just the network, it, it communicates with your, the file system of your machine, even the database of your, if there is, it can communicate with almost various aspects of your, of your machine. Good. Now, since it can do all these things, then for us to actually communicate, or maybe we would like to search for something, whenever we want to search for something on Google, let's say uh, I'm searching for, let's say, um, apples, okay? If I hit apples, what happens is that you can see down here that it went out, let me close it and then refresh it and do it again. Let me just, good, and then do this. You see, it went out there and fetched all these files. So behind the scenes, there is some sort of what? Network interaction. That is what the internet is really doing. This is what the web is. The web is what we are seeing. We are seeing oh, buttons, uh, images, and this is the web. But behind the scenes, there is also what the network effect, which is, and, and not the, the, the law of network effect, but there is also a network act activity going on. And the network activity that is going on is this, that the, the data you sent went out of your machine, right? And then it hit a particular server as a request. And that server also responded and we got the response. And we see that it says about two, 250 million or 250 billion uh, results and all those stuff coming up. This is what the web does. And, and, and this is just one tip of a very huge iceberg. One tip of a very huge iceberg. I believe it's, 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 it's a bit um, clear, but what this exercise is about is for us to know that the web browser is, is more than what you actually think of just going on Google to just um, type in stuff. There, whenever you are searching for something, whenever you are posting, you are adding something. There is a lot of stuff that is going on behind the scenes. All right. Okay, good. So let's go back to our um, um, Eunice. Um, I can see your hand is also up. Any, any, any challenge? Okay. All right, good. So we are back to, uh, so as I said, so that is now at least we have a glimpse of what the web browser is. And whatever that we do, yeah, Eunice, um, you have something to say. Sir, please, hold on. I was not seeing the screen. It was the CSS tricks that was happening on my screen, but I think it's better now. Okay, okay, that's yes, fine, sir. that's fine. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, sir, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, okay. So now we focus more on the browser, okay? we we. We've talked about what the, we know that, okay, the web browser is not some simple program. It's really a complex program. And now our, our focus will be turning on to what is really happening when we are viewing pages, we are seeing things. Okay, so the web browser, once it gets the response, you see, we, we said that it gets what? We make a request and then it gets a response. Please um, permit me for us to go back to the, 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 the diagram again, um, the demonstration I was just doing. Okay, all right, good. Let's go back to the demonstration once again. All right, okay, so um, please, I hope all of you can see my screen now. This is Google, I'm on Google page. I believe you can all see my screen. Right, Elvis, you yes. can see the screen, right? Yes, sir. Good, good, good. All right, good. Now, you see, we said that we would have to make a request. So a request, it could be anything. It could be that I'm searching for maybe um, mangoes. Once I make this request, it goes through the network layer, right? The request is taken by the browser 
passed on to the, 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 the operating systems, way to the hardware sent outside and receive back what a response. Now, when we get the response back, what happens is that the browser would then have to what? Print. So right now I'm just going to use some low level terms so that all of us can really understand. The browser will then print for us what we are seeing now. So I search for mangoes, I hit enter and I'm getting this. Now, anytime I'm getting these new pages, the browser is drawing, is drawing, is drawing everything, is painting. It's like, it's painting everything that you are seeing. So meaning that it is using your what your your graphic card to do stuff, guys. Um, I can see some hands up again. Um, okay, so in order not to make it, if if there is a challenge, um, let me just see if I can check the the chats if there is any problem in there. Okay, so please, if you have any questions, you can just drop the questions in the chat and um, Elvis and Ellis will take care of it. They will, they will just raise their hands and then I'll call them and we'll do it. All right, okay, good, thank you. So what happens is that the browser redraws. Each time I'm, 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 I'm searching for something, I'm navigating to, it redraws. Now it redraws it. So more or less, we, we are just using these terms in a very loose way so that everyone can, get it but if you turn and then let's right click our browsers and click on view page source view page source you would see that there is some there is a whole lot of codes that are written behind the scenes um i think my browser yeah good so uh, some of you can see these codes some it doesn't make sense at all okay now this is what is happening. Behind the scenes, the browser actually passes the data that has come. It will check the format of that very data. It will check whether this data is, um, is, is an XML, an HTML, and we'll be looking at the HTML very soon. And then it will pass it. When, in computer terms, they use big words. If they, you hear the word pass, it means that it's going to what? Process and go through it. Okay, it will process and go through the response that has come, and then it will present it to us. It more or less print it on the screen for us to see. And that is what we are seeing now, all right? Each website you will visit, any website you will visit goes through the same process. If you, you, you look at this very website like this, that looks very beautiful. If you look at a page source, you will see that behind the scenes, there is some sort of codes that are there. Okay, now, so let's head back to our um, slides, our deck of slides and uh, just go a bit deep into it. So the browser passes the data and it receives it into what we call the DOM. Now the DOM for this level, we would not move deep into it because it's, um, it's, it's a, a bit of a complex level. Maybe our next um, 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 workshop, we can, once we gain the, the, the basics, we can move into the DOM world. Now the DOM is more or less like an internal representation of whatever data that is coming, which is most of the time HTML that the browser is passing. So the DOM would offer us something we call an API, and don't worry about an API now, we'll talk about APIs very soon, that we, we as developers can manipulate, we can mess around with it, we can do anything we want to do with the DOM. And that is why you can have an image, you can tweak the image in a particular way in the browser, because the image is part of the DOM. And as I've said, we'll have a whole lecture on the DOM, a time to come, we just have a whole deep lecture on it. But for now, it's important to understand that every data that comes, the browser would pass the data. And depending on the nature of the data, and most of the time, if the data is HTML, it will pass it, receive it into a DOM, and then it would present it for us to see. Okay, good. So the HTML 
is what is coming most of the time, most of the time, because we also have other data that will be coming like um, XML, JSON, different formats will be coming. But our focus will be on the HTML response that is coming. And the HTML response that is coming is the one that is going to be passed through the DOM tree or the DOM. The DOM simply stands for Document Object Model, okay? And the HTML will pass it. Now, HTML basically is what is the hypertext markup language. Now, when we say it's a hypertext markup language, all we are trying to say is that it is some sort of a tool, a language that we use to, let's use this word again. So I'm going to use terms that are not computer science so that we can really understand. So it's more or less like typesetting. We are trying to, so maybe you want to write a letter to your friend. Back in primary school, when we want to write letters to our friends, what do we do? We will say, okay, write um, salutation. Um, where is your address going to be? What would be the title of your letter? So you see, what are we doing? We are trying to format the document in such a way that once our friend or our family member sees the, the letter, they know that, okay, dear, this means he's, he or she is greeting me. You see, HTML is just like that. The HTML helps us to also typeset documents on the web. Okay, so um, for example, back to the example of the, the letter, you could say, okay, I'm writing, and then you will leave one space for a paragraph. Then you, you, put, you leave another space whereby you're going to list items of certain things you are going to do. Then you put some black or you can number it one, two, three. That is also a list. All these things are in HTML too as well. So HTML actually, it came as a, as a result of scientists trying to share information, trying to share their research with their colleagues. So on the web, and you know that we've learned that the web facilitates or writes on the internet to enable us to share information. So this was what the scientists were doing. And in, in some time it became popularized, everybody was is using, now everyone is using the HTML as we are using it today. So the HTML comes from um, a family known as a standard generalized markup language. And its sole purpose was to allow, as I've said, scientists to share data in a standardized format. Because if we don't have a standard, then anyone can be writing letters anyhow. Anybody can be writing anything anyhow. And we're saying that, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. So it is a standardized format in which we format documents for the web. And it uses tags in marking up the data. And we'll be seeing them soon. As you can see, even just here, you can see that this is a tag, all right, H1. And in there is where the data itself is. So titles is a boy and is within, is surrounded by what H1 tags. So the above code is what a simple HTML. And this, this is a simple HTML code. This is how it is written. We put tags around what the data that we are trying to send across, okay? We put tags around the data that we are trying to send across. Um, okay, Elvis, please, your hand is up. Any question? Um, yeah, I think it, we are still facing the same challenge um, as the screen is not being able to show here. Can you see my screen? So it, it, only, it, only, comes, it only comes when we um, address the issue to you and then it changes from, so everything we were doing previously, we couldn't see. Oh, so wow. I don't know what yeah. did, you see, did, did, you, did you see this side? Yeah, we just saw it right now. Okay, so the I think HTML maybe the, the data reception is slow, probably, because maybe it looks like when I'm, I move, then it's, it comes. But you can see the screen right now, right? Yeah, we can see this right now. Okay. Um, For the past um, seven to five minutes ago, we Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, then um, hold on. Let me see what I can do. Let me just see what I can do. Uh, Okay. okay, 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 all right. So um, please leave your mic microphone on, okay? So that um, if there is a problem, you can immediately just hint me up. Then I can resolve it, especially with regards to the, yeah. 
Okay, if, if there is no background noise, that's the place. So all I was saying was this, that the browser passes the data, okay? The data that is coming. Remember we said that the internet works on the model of requests and response. So we make a request and the, there must be a response. So the response that is coming goes through the browser. The browser will pass. And as I said, the word pass is, an, is a computer term, but basically it's about it processes it. It checks through it. Okay, and receives it into a DOM. Okay, basically that's all that it, it does. Now, and I said that most of the time the data that is coming is in the format of what HTML. Please, I hope everyone can see my screen. The data yeah. that is coming is what is HTML. So this HTML is hypertext markup language. Hypertext markup language. Now, this hypertext markup language came as a result of scientists trying to share data on the web in a more standardized way. So for example, and I was giving the example of when there is, let's say a kid, all right? Or when you were a kid and you had maybe JSS, or even now some of, some of us still write letters. Now, if you are writing letters, it goes through some format, right? You have an address, you have um, 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 maybe a, a salutation, you have the title of the letter, you, you know the body of the letter, right? You have the paragraphs in the letter, right? And then you have your conclusion, right? So these are parts of the letter and every letter, right? Every letter goes have this general format, every letter. Once you pick up a letter, you'll be asking yourself, okay, where is the, the address? Where is the date? Where is the, the body of the letter? Where is the salutation? Where is the conclusion? All right. Now, on the web too, we have something similar. The HTML, which is the markup language, allows us to also do this. But then we do it using some set of codes. Instead of just writing title um, and bolding stuff, we use certain codes to be able to what, format our document. Please, I believe it, it makes sense to format our document. And in formatting our document, we also have to format it correctly so that people and even um, and search engines can understand what we are actually trying to do, okay? So for example, you can see on your screen now, um, Elvis, please, you can see the screen, right? Yeah, we can see the HTML comes from the... Comes can you from... see? H1, Titus is a boy. Can you see that? Uh, Titus is a boy. Can you see it? Yes, please. Okay, good. Good. So in this case, um, you can see that this very example, H1 emphasizes on what? Priority. And that is when you will see that we have different types of the headings. And you, for those that receive them, I'm sure some of you have received the the document on HTML notes, and you will see the various types of um, H um, um, headings and codes that are in there, okay? Now, so when it comes to HTML, when we are writing HTML, it is all about tags. It's using the angle, the left um, angle brackets and the right angle brackets to, to just um, format or mark up our document. So, a, 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 a more or less a good example for tagging. We can call it tagging, or it's like um, you are at the airport or you are even traveling and your bags, you see that your bags, they put some tags on them, okay? That is what we are doing when we are formatting our document with HTML, okay? But we need to also be careful that we just don't use any tag anyhow. We need to use a tag, the right tag for the right thing. So if you don't use the right tag for the right thing, um, the search engines like Google, like Bing, like ask.com, like Yahoo, they would also not render your results to people properly, okay? And so that is something we call semantically correct document. And that might be a future stuff we we'll talk about. Probably we'll talk about it today, okay? We'll talk about it today. Good. So with that said, um, that is what I would... I would, I would end on, it's time for us to do serious coding. So we'll be beginning with our HTML codes 
And from there, we'll move on to CSS. At this moment, um, please, if and it's almost it's 10 for the five for the six. So if there is any question, I'll pause for questions to come in. Please, any question? Um, Elvis, um, has there been any, is there any question? You can raise your hand, you can type in the question and we can attend to the question. Okay. I think I'm still asking them. There's um, no question here for now. Okay, there's no question for now. All right, then I'll just jump in into our, um, our coding. Good. So before we could, um, I made mention of the fact that we need to download um, a text editor. And the text editor, so please let me share with you my screen, right? Um, so the Hello, sir. Yeah, I admitted myself. Yeah, please, can you see my screen now? Okay, good. All right, so we would have to go and download this text editor. This, what, this is the tool we'll be using in writing HTML, and we'll walk through it, all right? So you can go to VS Code. There are different forms or different types of text editors that are available, okay? Sorry, sir. Yes. Um, the, the screen is still static. Oops. We still have the um, the codes which we saw previous. Yeah. So bad. I think you are now seeing it. Can you see it now? Yes, please. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Are we good? Is everyone okay? All right. So you you can download your text editor. That and what we'll be using is what we is called um, the Visual Studio Code or VS Code is one of the most popular um, text editors that are available. Um, we have quite a number. We have Nova, we have Sublime Text, we have WebStorm, but this is free. This is easy to use and it's available, all right? At the same time, it is also a, a professional tool that you can actually use. So you can just download mine. I'm using a Mac, so it automatically looks, um, picks the, the Mac, OS. If you are using Windows, you can just download the Windows stable version. Please don't download the insiders. The insiders are previews. Um, they have a lot of bugs. You can also download, if you are using Linux, then you can go with Linux or Windows or Mac. All right. Okay. Thank you. Now, so I've already downloaded it. Um, once you've downloaded it, you can just double click on it or click on it and install it. Okay. okay. Is it the, is it the code editing redefined? But I mean, yes. This 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 is what I mean. There's a you can just download it. There's a code. There's a software we are. So once if you go to this very website, you should see your. It would have automatically picked the operating system, and then you just have to yeah. click on download, and then you just download it. So if I click on download, it will just download on my on my on my browser, and I'll just have to double click on it and then install it. I hope we are all good. Yes. Please, any questions? Not done. All right. Good. 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 So let me give like some five minutes for those who may not have downloaded it to download it, and then um, we will just uh, roll in. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So I'm going to share with you. So after downloading and opening it, this is what you would see. You would see this. Um, let me change my theme so that uh, 
we can all move from the so it becomes a bit white yeah good so i'm going to use a white visual studio team okay good now yours 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 you can change the theme the way you want you can go to the file and then go to preferences if you are using windows if you are using mac you can click on the code itself and then go to preferences go to color theme and then change the theme as the way it's fit for you the theme itself has no impact on the, the the course that we are doing all that matters is that you've been able to install it and you can actually be, be ready for us to move on please um if you've not been able to install it can you raise your hand if you've not been able to install it you can raise your hand so that we i can get to know the problem okay good so so after, sorry sorry sir. Yes. after installing um it gets started and after tapping on the get started a new folder open file new file open file open folder good that's so what i'm seeing good so you've been able to install it right yes sir now you see that on your left side you see where my my case is do you see the explorer Yes. Good. So if you click on it, you would see you have not yet opened the folder or you have to clone a repository locally. I'm sure you will see these things there. So for hey, your screen is not moving. Oh, wow. Please, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. So. so you can see what you were saying earlier. Yeah, so you can see the icon over here. You click on Explorer, you see open folder. Can you see the open folder? Yes. Good. So all of us can click on open folder. All right. So, and then in that very, the dialog box that will come, you can actually create a folder. Just click on creating a folder. And maybe you can call it HTML lessons. HTML lessons. All right. HTML lessons. And then after, after you've created that folder, just click on open. And then the code editor will open that folder. Just click on open. And then the code editor would open that folder. Please, if you if you are having challenges, just let me know. You can raise your um, hand. They, Good. Mine, when I created it, they said the name is not valid. Uh, the folder name is not valid. Um okay, you are using Windows. Yes, sir. So if you can click on you can create the folder. One thing is I can create the folder, maybe HTML hyphen lessons. And then okay. you can just open it up. You can also, if you are seeing select folder, just create your folder and select that folder. Double click on that folder and that will be it. That's for those using Windows. For those using Windows, just select the folder. Create the folder and select the folder. So you create the folder in there and then you just highlight on the folder and click select folder at the bottom right and it will just open. Another way too could be that after you've created, a, you can create a folder on your desktop and drag it onto the text editor. You can create the folder on the desktop separately. So um, David, David, David Entry, um, please you follow. You can create the folder yeah, separately. I think, sir, please, he's having the same challenge. Yes. I'm having here. Good, so as I'm saying, you can just create a folder on your desktop, normal creating a folder of deck on your desktop, name it HTML lessons or any name you want to give it. And then drag the folder onto, drag the folder onto the app, onto the VS Code itself. Please, has anyone been able to do it? Okay. 
Good, good. So Joseph, you've been able to do it. Please, if you've been able to do it, just show, give me a hand, a, a thumbs up, a thumbs up on the, on, 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 on by your name. Just a I've thumbs up, thumbs up. If you have been able to do it, just thumbs up. That means you are on. You are, those that have not been able to do it too, please, you can do it. So just, just, just create the folder. If you are using um, Windows, you can create a folder on your desktop and drag it into the, the, the app once you've been able to install it. So you, you should be proud of yourself now because you've been able to install a text editor. And now you are, you are now about to even um, populate the text editor with your own personal codes. Good, good, good. So uh, it looks like the thumbs up, it comes and it goes like traffic light. <laughs> it's one, two, one, two. Please, if you've been able to do it, just give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Okay, Ruben, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Selali, that's good. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So we have about seven people who have been able to do it. Um, Patricia, yes. Any any challenge? Patricia, any challenge? Okay. Please, if you have any challenges, raise your hand up. Okay. All right, great. Abigail. Yeah, thumbs up, either on the chat or by your name. Just thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, great, great, great. Now, um, Elvis, Sorry. are we good? Can we proceed? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. So now, please, can you all see my screen? Yes, you can see. Good, good, good. All right. Okay, so now that you've been able to achieve this, um, now you can right click. You can right click. Right click. That is on the left side bar. Just right click. You can just hold the. Um, you can even hover your hand, your 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 mouse over the. I say your hand, your 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 mouse over the the folder, and you should see new file, new folder. You can also right click, and you would see a context menu will pop up: new file, new folder. Uh, Good. So just click on new file and new file and enter index.html. Just enter index.html. New file, index.html. New file, index.html. Please, are we good? All right. Now, nice. once you have you have um, you have done this, you can hit Shift One, Shift One. Okay, Shift One, and that will be the exclamation mark sign, and you can hit Tab just like that. I'm going to do it again. Shift one exclamation mark sign will come just hit tab once again i'm doing it shift tab exclamation mark just hit tab are we good um sir we are yes. not seeing it on the screen oh please can you see it Please, can you see it? Um, I, I, I think I'm, I'm a little bit lost. I don't know if the okay. is missing. Delphine, uh, Delphine, yes, can you see my good. screen? Delphine, can you see my screen? She says she can't see it. Yes, I yeah, can. I've seen see it. it in the chat, but I'm asking if maybe she can see now. Can you see it now? Yeah, I can see now, but still, I'm, I'm having a challenge here with my. What's the problem with yours? 
uh, after this the index. So yes, dot. just just be there. If you have been able to create the index dot HTML, that is fine. Okay, good. Now, in the in the file itself, in the file itself, please can you all see? In the file yes, itself, sir. just hit shift exclamation mark. That is shift one, shift one, shift mm -hmm. one. Right? Have you been able to do it? Yes, sir. Can you see my screen? Yes. Good. And hit enter or tab. Enter or tab. Any of those keys. You can hit enter or tab. Please, can you see my it now? Yes. It looks like I my screen finishes before sometimes you see what I'm doing. I'm wondering what the problem might be. Um, okay. Right. Let's see. I'm sure as we go along, it will change. All right. Please, have you been able to achieve this? Yes, sir. Please, who has on who has not been able to achieve it? Abigail. Are we all good? Can I proceed? Good. Hello? Can I proceed, please? Yes, sir. Good. Now, so you see that now, let's go through what we as we, we are seeing on our screen now. We just, um, so there's a, that's a shortcut. It's a shortcut of writing an HTML document. Now, by just writing this, if you have, this is an HTML, a proper document, HTML document, nothing wrong with this. So we have what we call the doc type. Now, this doc type, sends a message to the browser that the document coming in is what is type what html document type okay. yes i think someone is having a challenge oh, okay irama um, uh, irama, irama said yes um, what, what's 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 the problem irama where are you now hello Irama. Oh, she's okay now. Mm, sure. Okay. Good. So um so let's 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 journey along gradually. And so for, for those of us who already know how to program, we all have to be patient so that we can all move together. All right. It's better we all understand it than some understand and some don't really have an idea what is going on. Now, for those that are joining us, um, when we are done, the, the video will be made available. So do not worry, you can pick. But what we've done so far is just to download the VS code, um, create a folder called HTML lessons. And after that, we are going to do it again inside the html lesson as a folder we created a file known as index.html and then i typed in shift one and the exclamation mark came and you just hit enter and you will get this that is all that we've done we've not done anything much we've not written things our own but this is written to our, written for us by just making a simple command please are we all good now if we are good, please let me see thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. If we are good, thumbs up, please, thumbs up. All right, good, good, good. All right, um, Abigail, you seem to have a problem. Are we all good? All right, okay. So with this said, as I was explaining, this indicates that we are dealing with what a document type in is for the browser that the, the the document coming in is what is html and this is html this is the root the root of the document is html the root of the document so this is the root of the document and so right now what we are doing is that we are going through the structure of the html and one beautiful thing about vs code is that you can highlight on some of the 
the, 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 the tax and it will give you hints on what is going on. Sometimes if you just hover over it, so I'm hovering over the HTML and say the HTML element represents the root of an HTML document. If you hover with your Keza on the HTML, it will indicate it to you. So you can even be learning whilst you are going along, okay? What, please, when you type shift exclamation mark, don't make any space, just hit enter or hit tab. If enter is not working for you, you can use the tab, all right? If enter is not working for you, you can hit and hit tab, and that is okay, the tab, T-A-B. You can hit the tab and it would work for you, okay? Um, I wish, I know that some of you are using Atom Text Editor. Um, I wish we are all using the same text editor so that we can have similar um, um, feedback, all right? Um, Atom Text Editor is really good, but in, currently the most popular one is VS Code. And I would entreat and encourage you that you use it because there are a lot of plugins we might be using very soon and you might not get it with Atom Text Editor. So Abigail, please download the VS Code and let's get back on track, all right? Good. Okay, so with the doc type, so now I've explained the HTML as the root. Now we also have the head section of what? The HTML, after the root, there is a head section. In the head section, there are certain things and we'll be coming back to them very soon. And then there is also what? The body. Now you will see that we, as I said earlier on, we deal with what? The angle brackets, that is the tax. So we open and we close. We opened and we close. We open, but for this, some of them are self-closing and we'll talk about that. You can look at that in the notes I sent earlier on. We have self-closing tax and we have open and close tax. Okay, so in the head section, there is what? Meta Cassid. Now, for this very um, 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 course or online stuff, we won't de delve deeper into this. But one thing you need to understand is that the meta tag help us to know certain things about the, the HTML document. It's more or less about information about the document you are authoring. So if you hover over it, this is Meta, meta Cassid UTF-8. Um, and this is for encoding purposes. We can talk more about this later. Then the one that I'll talk about is the viewport, as you can see on your on your machine. Um, Senam, you said the screen is frozen. Let me refer. Why, why is the screen not? Is it better now, Senam? Is it better? Good. So you can see that I've highlighted meta name viewport. This is a very important tag that helps. Our, 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 our web page to be responsive on the devices, on the multiple devices that are available, okay? It's a very, very important tag. It's for, um, without it, even if you build your website to be responsive, the mobile phones and tablets would not still render it as a responsive website, okay? Then the next and most important thing is what? The title the title, the title of this document, the title of this document, and all of them reside in what? The, the head section of the HTML document. Are we good? Thumbs up if we are good. Thumbs up if we are good. Joseph, is it okay? Good, 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 good. Abigail is back. Joseph is back, good. Then the next section is what? The body. So you remember that when I was talking about HTML, I said that you can keep in mind like the way the, 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 um, you write letters. And in writing letters, we have a head section. We have a body section, okay? And everything you are writing must be within this HTML. Now, if you write anything down here, it is invalid. Everything that you would see must be here. Everything must be here. Things that you want your, your, your website customers to see must be within what? The body 
section, the body section, this side, the body section. Please, can you see my screen? Can you see me typing? Okay. Is it better now? Yeah, the body section, the body section. Uh, good. Oops, Ruben, say it's frozen. Um, can you see it now? Is it better? Yeah, I'm wondering why it is not in real time that I finished before sometimes you see. Um, I don't know, we will go on a break, maybe 11.20, all right? When we go on a break, I'll log off and log back on so that maybe we can rectify that challenge. I don't know what actually is going on, but I'll just go off and come back again and then we we'll see probably the, so 11.20, we just, or let's make it, let's say 11.15. Then we we'll just come back at 11.20 and check what actually is going on, all right? Are we good? Great. So all the information that you want your people to see must be within what? In the body section. If it is not in the body section, you are writing invalid, invalid HTML. Now, so now that we've done this, now that we've done this, okay, save, um, click on control save or control S. Um, for those using Mac, you can hit on command S. Now, and open your file. You can right click on your file and then you can open it. You can go and open it on the desktop itself in the folder. So for me, I would check where the file does the index file itself is. So you can just right click on it and open it with Chrome. Open it with Firefox or open it with, um, 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 with Safari or Edge. So just right click on it and click on, okay, I think the, yes, it is empty. Very good, it's empty. But if you look at the tab, let me, let me share with you where my screen is. If you look at it, if you look at the tab, you will see that what we wrote earlier on is showing, document is showing. Can you guys see, have you been able to do it? Are you seeing a blank screen, a white blank screen? Good, Abigail, good, Abigail. Have, have you been able to do it? If you are unable to do it, please raise your hand and we'll attend to you. Good, good, Coyote, good, good, Bernard, yes. So that you see that there is what? Yo, Joseph, you still can't see. Yes, exactly. So your, your, your body section must be blank. And so once you open it in, in, in Google Chrome, you are going to see a blank page. Actually, you should see a blank page. You shouldn't see anything in there. Can we all agree we are seeing blank pages? Are we all seeing blank pages? Great. Now, you can see that at the top, the tab, the tab itself, the tab itself. Elvis, you said yes, you said no. Which one? Great. Okay, so right click on that blank page, right click on the blank page and click on view page source. Right click on the blank page and view page source. Click on view page source, view page, view page source. And this is what you are to see. All right, please, can you all see? I will, I will zoom in a bit so that you can see. Can you all see? If you can see what we just wrote, please give me thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. If you can see your page source, that's great. That's great.
Good, 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 good. Sandra, can you see? Good, good. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. Means that we are all on the same page. So now this is your first page. This is your first HTML page. For those who have never programmed before, this is how it is. And you see that when you go back, because there is nothing in the body, it is what? It is a blank page. It is a blank page. There is nothing in the body. It's a blank page. Okay. Now, let's go back to our text editor. Please, let's all go back to our text editor. Our text editor. Now, I want you to change something in the title. In the title, change it to my first web, sorry, first web page. My first web page. My first web page. The title, change it to my first web page. And in the body section, in the body section, all right, just type H1 like this, angle brackets, H1. You see that it's sometimes it's my autocomplete for you. H1 and enter. This is my first web page. It is awesome. Just this. Just write this. Please, can you all see? Okay, I've been frozen. <laughs> yeah, we'll be going on a break soon and then we'll look at what the problem is. I'll check what the problem is. Now, Bright, Kwesi, I don't know, um, your, your symbol, I, I, I'm unable to understand it. Please, can you all see? Can you all see? Good. So just enter, just your title. In the title section, write my first web page. And then the body, you write, this is my first web page. It is awesome. Start with H1, angle bracket H1. So I'm going to increase my font so that you can all see what I'm writing. Yeah, so I'm increasing the font so that you can see. Please, can you all see? And have you been able to do that? When you are done, please click on save. Control S, Control S, Control S. Now. Let's go back to the browser again. Let's go back to the browser again. Let's go back to the browser again and refresh and refresh. And you should see this. This is my first page, web page. It is awesome. Now, Bright, what, what is your challenge now? Bright, can you type your challenge for me to see? Great Senam, great Senam, great Senam. Yeah, great, great, they do, yeah, good. So this is my first web page. And now we've been able to create our first web page. Are we good? All right, so we'll be breaking here so that we can attend to all the challenges that we have been facing. Yeah, so we are breaking for from 11.20, we would come back at 11.35, 35, just 35 so that I can log off, come back in, so that I know what the real time issues are with the with the with the Zoom. All right, but for now you should be proud of yourself um, because you've been able to what, create your first web page. There's more good stuff to come. All right, and if you have any question, it, it, it's also open. You can actually ask your question. All right, you you, you can ask your question and 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 I, I will attend to it right now. Yeah, so. Just for the next five minutes, any question? Any question? Bright, are you okay? Okay, you said your PC is not responding, okay. Um, so maybe shut the machine down, or refresh, restart the machine and join back, okay? All right, Prince. Prince. 
Okay, so Elvis, where, where are you now? What is your challenge now? Where are you now, Elvis? Yeah, Elvis, where are we now? What, what, what's your challenge? Hello? Uh -huh. I think you need to unmute. Unmute so that I can hear you. Um, so this is it. Okay. I don't know if you can see. I can see. Yeah. Yeah, so just open the documents in the web browser, all right? So, um, hold on, um, let me see. Uh, okay, so, hold on. Um, I'm trying to maximize the, so that I can see your, yeah, good. So, you know what, you dropped out. What you need to do is that wherever you save your files, okay, wherever you save your file on the on the laptop, all right, all you need to do yeah. is that go into that folder, go into the folder, go into the folder, no, the folder that the file has been stored in. Okay. Good. Open that folder up. Where, where did you save the file? Okay, if you can't find it, let's go to the text editor ISO. Let's go to the text editor ISO. Good. Now, right click on the file. Right click on the file. The file is up. No, the file, the file. That's in index.html. Right click on index.html. No, yes, on your left, exactly. Right click on it. Right click, not, not click, right click. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, do you see open, open with? Yes, open with. Can you take your phone closer to it so that I can see what you are seeing? Okay, now, so reveal, click on reveal in file explorer. Good, now, um, shift the camera a bit so that I can see. Good, now, right click on that file that you see. Okay, open with, open with. Do you have Chrome on your machine? Yeah, so click on Google Chrome. So select Google Chrome, Google Chrome, select Google Chrome, and then hit the always, always the down there. Good, and click okay. Good, now you see a blank page, right? Yes, sir. Very good, now go back to the text editor. Okay, now um, write, H1, angle brackets, left angle bracket, H1. Okay, then close it, close it. Good, now in the middle type, this is my first web page. Okay, it is awesome. So you just write exclamation mark, it is awesome. That's it. Now in the title, are you done? Okay. Go. Yeah, so in the title, in the title, the document, where the document is. Now, yeah. right in the 
my first web page. In the middle, remove the documents and then type my first web page in between the title. Oh, no, 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 no. Just maintain the title as that as a tag. Good. Now the document, yeah, the word document, the word, yeah, delete it. And type my first web page. Good. Enter, enter. It's, it's completing for you, so just hit enter. All right, good. Now save, control S. Okay, then go back to the browser. And refresh. Good, good. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Are we all good? I hope you are good now. All right, so... Um, I'm tempted because, but I'm surprised because I'm you are I'm able to see your screen in real time. So I don't know. Is my screen is it better now? Should I go off and come back or we are all good? Yes, to go? Yeah, let's go off and come because it's still stuck. All right, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log off and then we will come back at eleven thirty-five. Please eleven thirty-five. Please log on. A minute break, sir. A minute break. A minute break. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Joseph, a minute break. All right, that's fine. Okay. Good. So I'm assigning um, Elvis. I'm assigning you to the to the to the so that I can join back. Okay. 